So let's look at the noise. We had an additive white Gaussian noise, N I of T, with a mean of zero, and it's a double sided power spectral density such that the flat spectrum has a value of N zero divided by two. The received input of the carrier to noise ratio is defined as as the FM of the signal power at the receiver input divided by the input noise power in the message bandwidth. Now our carrier power is going to, since we only have the amplitude remains constant, it's just going to be alpha squared AC squared divided by 2. Because if you go back to one slide right here, let me go back real quick, we could see that the amplitude is alpha AC, hence the power associated with this sinusoidal signal, this carrier, is alpha squared AC squared over 2. and the noise power is N0B since this is going to be double sided when we multiply this height by 2 with a width of 2B hence we get N0B so what we have is the receiver input the carry to noise ratio is governed by this equation alpha squared AC squared divided by 2 which is the power in the carrier divided by the noise power N0B so let's look at the amplitude phase representation of narrow band noise coming out of the pre-detection filter output. In other words, R1 of T. So we see that R1 of T consists of two components, one due to the carrier with the embedded message in the angle, and N of T. And we're going to represent it in terms of amplitude and phase. So here's our amplitude of our carrier and the phase associated with the carrier. We're going to do the same thing with the noise. Here we have the amplitude of the noise and the angle of the noise phi, T of here. And we're going to look at the high carry to noise ratio such that the amplitude of the carrier is a lot bigger than the amplitude aspect of the noise. Again, notice this is changes with time, whereas alpha AC, since this is a angle modulated signal, the carrier at the receiver remains fixed. 